Namaste. Welcome to Satsang today. So we come to satsang for a direct experience <clears throat> of what we really are and to um, come to live as what we really are as well. And in that respect, we uh, had a suggestion for something that we could do that was, was going to be helpful. And somebody asked me to do um, a kind of meditative self-inquiry with some contemplation thrown in. So I've um, been really looking at this and I really feel it's a very good idea. So we'll do that today. We'll go into um, a direct recognition of what's true, what's fundamental about us. And then we'll explore that. We'll have a look at some of the things that are different about the self that we still struggle with in our awakening sometimes. And we'll Throw in a little bit of contemplation towards the end uh, to help us. Uh, contemplation really is just to help us overcome these core beliefs that we all have, no matter where we are in the world or where we start from in our spiritual practice. That we all have some of these beliefs. Uh, there's three that are in everyone that I've worked with. Um, I can't get what I want, this deep seated feeling that. Um, in limitation, this deep-seated feeling and not being able to have everything that we want effortlessly. And um, a feeling of being unworthy, not good enough, and a feeling of being unsafe and uh, the resulting emotions that come from those anger, guilt, shame, fear, tend to pervade most of our life. So if you want to follow along with this, it's highly recommended. It will be added to the core teachings playlist as well on the YouTube channel to kind of it com hopefully combine all three of the meditation, self-inquiry, contemplation. You do this with your eyes open or closed, however you feel most natural. It's absolutely fine either way. So let's just start by um, sitting comfortably, making sure that you're comfy, you can relax for 20, 25 minutes will uh, take to, do, to go through this, perhaps. And just start by taking a nice deep breath or two, allowing yourself to be more centered, more present here with me in this open inquiry. And just noticing the presence of your body, noticing how your body feels, checking in with it. It may be hot or cold or comfy, uncomfy, maybe tensions, there may be energy moving, just checking and being present with the body. A nice deep breath. And then just simply to bring your attention to <clears throat> the space around your body. Always there is some space around the objects in the room, around your body. Just empty space, that's all it's going to look like. It's not going to look amazing or like anything special at all. And again, with your eyes closed or open is absolutely fine. Even with your eyes closed, you know the space is there. So just recognizing this empty space that it does already fit the categories of the self, the noumenon, awareness, whatever we're calling it. It is invisible, intangible. It is not something that we can see coming or going. It's certainly not changing, is it, the empty space around your body? And as we're going through this investigation, 
this inquiry. From time to time, your attention is going to drift to some ideas, some thoughts, some sounds in your environment, and it's fine. Or to something going on inside your body. You just bring your attention back to whatever I'm saying. When you realize you've drifted, it's no big deal. So just checking out the empty space around you, around your body. And just seeing if we can find you in that space, just searching the empty space. There's a spaciousness around you, around your body. And can you find a separate being called you in that? Just looking in the empty space, the spaciousness. We can find our body, our bodies there in the space. And we can find some thoughts maybe coming and going in that space. There may be emotions arising or not. Different states coming and going in the body. Maybe sensations, feelings going on. But can you find in that spaciousness a separate you? Something that is inhabiting the body, a someone inhabiting your body. Can you find that in this empty space? When we really slow down and come to look for it, seems to be there. I seem to be a someone. When I really stop and look, can I find that in this spaciousness around my body? And even if we come to discover that we can't actually find this someone, it still may seem to be there. You have a body, you have sense perception, you have thoughts going on, emotions. All of this gives the sense of being someone. And there's nothing wrong with that. You just need to be clear that there isn't actually a separate edge to you. When we search this spaciousness, can we find an edge to you? Can you find an edge? If we can't find a separate you, when we really look, an energetic boundary where you stop and the next person starts, what does that mean for you then? Are you really separate to anything if you can't find an edge? Your body seems to have an edge. Your thoughts seem to have a coming and goingness and a separateness. But what about this you? Where are you in the spaciousness? Can you find a you in the spaciousness? As we come to look like this, we may be surprised to find that all we actually find is the spaciousness, something that is not a thing, isn't graspable, isn't perceivable with our senses or our mind, but it's very much here, very much stable. Maybe it's so stable that we've never really given it the attention that it deserves because it's always here, it's not changing, it's not shouting for attention. It kind of gets overlooked. So just checking with me one more time. Not fighting with the sense of this is someone, there seems to be someone. Just like for me now, there seems to be someone here but it's been seen that it's not actually, there aren't really any edges to my being. Can there be an edge in the spaciousness? Can there be an edge to your spaciousness? 
around your body. And if there isn't an edge, how far do you reach then in all directions from your body? And isn't your body present exactly in this space? Can they really be different? If you don't have any edges, your body must be right where this spaciousness is. And so to your thoughts, and so to your emotions. Let's look at this spaciousness. We've looked, does it have any edges? Is it coming and going? Is it appearing and disappearing like the objects in the spaciousness? Thoughts appear and disappear. Bodies appear, last for a while and then disappear. Does this spaciousness, this pure intelligence, does it appear and disappear or is it not the same? Can it come and go? Can it be absent, appearing and disappearing as only happening to forms, coming and going is only happening to forms. How long has the spaciousness been here? Can it start and will it come to an end? Because really, if we can't find a separate being in this spaciousness, then we must be this spaciousness. Is it coming and going? Does it start? What does it mean to start? It means to suddenly exist where it didn't before. And an end, what does an end mean? It means to stop existing where you did before. Does that apply to this spaciousness that you are? Can it suddenly start? Wouldn't that involve some change into some form? <clears throat> And what can bring an end to this spaciousness that is you? Would it be affected by any of the objects being removed? Would it even notice any of the objects being removed? Just checking this spaciousness out. And it's fine if you can't really answer any one of these investigative points. You can just simply come back <clears throat> over and over to it. And it will reveal itself. So we've looked at how far you reach as this spaciousness. Where do you end? Can you have an edge to something that has no form, no shape? How big are you then? Everywhere that there is an object, this space must be here first for the object to appear in. Everything, everything is appearing in this spaciousness, even the universe itself. Is this spaciousness changing? Is it 
able to be different than it is right now. If we could have done this a thousand years ago in a different body, would it have been any different at all, this spaciousness? And if we could somehow do this a million years from now, would it be any different than it is? Can it be absent from anywhere at all, this spaciousness? What could we do to it, if anything, to make it go away? Is there anything that we could do to damage it, to hurt it? Only if it is a thing can it be damaged. Only forms can be damaged. This form of spaciousness is uh, immune to all kinds of harm or change. Everything is constantly changing in it, but it is unaffected. Does it even need a human body, the spaciousness? Does it need a form to survive? Is it dependent upon our body? When we really look, does it need anything? Well, we can search can our body be here without the space for it to appear in? Can the space be here, the spaciousness, without any body there, which must be here first? So we're not discounting our body, our mind, our emotions, our life as a human being. We're just being clear what we are first and fundamentally with this human existence experience as an optional extra on top, the icing on the cake. And maybe this spaciousness can use the presence of your body-mind to recognize itself through contrast, through the moving, the changing, the becomingness of the body, the mind, and the manifestation. It can recognize it's you can recognize your unchanging uh, self. Can this spaciousness suffer? Can it feel bad? Can it? be ill? Can it grow old? Does it even know time? Is there any time in the spaciousness? Or is it that when a body appears, a human body, a sense of time begins? Time is born with the body and time disappears with the body too. Has there ever been a time that this spaciousness was not here? Could it be absent? Attention is on it now. Spaciousness is looking at itself now. And when it goes back to looking at thoughts later, or emotions or experiences, will the spaciousness be gone? Is it an experience?
can spaciousness disappear when attention is not looking at it? Does it need attention to look at it to exist? Or has it always been right here, unnoticed, unrecognized amidst the changing, moving becomingness of form and manifestation? Can this spacious nothingness that you are, can it suffer? Does it have karmic patterns? Is it affected by thoughts? Thoughts, beliefs float through this empty spaciousness. They begin, they float through, and then they end. Is the spaciousness affected? Does it even need an empty mind, spaciousness? Does it care? Does it need anything at all or want anything? Does it have a to-do list? Is it trying to wake up? Again, just checking out that spaciousness. Coming back to this present moment if your attention has drifted. Really checking this out. It's enough to just investigate this. Answers will come, maybe not immediately, but answers will come just by looking and wanting to see. Can the spaciousness be unsafe? Can anything threaten it? When we feel fear, are we really threatened if this spaciousness is what we are? Can anything impact us? Things can only happen to the form, to our body. Can this spaciousness be affected? Were you ever then unsafe? Were you ever in danger? Or was it this idea, I am this body only, that leads to fear? What can hurt you now if you don't need or want anything? If you're always here and depend upon nothing for your survival? If your survival is not even in question as this spaciousness? And if your body is arising out of, made out of this spaciousness, then so is your mind and your desires and all of your humanity is an expression of this spaciousness. What can be denied to you? Can you experience any lack or limitation as this. 
this that is always and everywhere, and also appearing as you, human being, made out of, shaped out of this spaciousness. Can you be denied anything that your body wants or needs? Do you even need awakening here as this? Or is it more of a recognition, a seeing, and then a being, looking at these beliefs, seeing if they're true now as this spaciousness? Can you be not good enough now? Can you be less than you should be as this spaciousness? Is there anything other than perfection for you? Perfection appearing as spaciousness and then appearing each moment as your body and mind. Can you really still be not good enough? And compared to what? Some thought idea in our mind. Right here, right now, as this spaciousness and your body and mind appearing inside it. Is there anything wrong at all with you? Is there anything wrong at all with anything? Are you just making these shapes, different forms, different species, all arising out of you, coming and going, always changing, made out of this pure sentience, this pure love that is you, So it can be as simple as checking out what you really are, seeing if you can find someone in that, not fighting against there seems to be someone, there always will seem to be a separate being. That's not a mistake. It's a unique expression. You are this ocean of spaciousness, And you're also appearing as this wave, this individual expression. We can celebrate both of these. They're not in conflict, they're in beautiful harmony. This ocean sculpting itself into this wave to experience itself. So just checking, checking out these points, checking them over and over again till it's known with the same clarity as this body-mind here. That's the only process, really. And then when our life suggests you're not good enough, when your life suggests you're not safe, when life suggests you can't have what you want, Deciding where you're going to stand then. This is true for me now. Am I going to agree with it now? And allowing this to be confirmed again and again and again. As you go through this again and again, it should become the greatest joy. At first we start with 
this feeling of why do I have to keep confirming this? Why isn't it sticking? And then we begin to experience great joy at noticing ourselves again and again. And you don't want to stop. So, as I said before, if any of those points that I've gone through has not been completely clear, the only difference is that I've looked at it again and again until it is clear. And I would really encourage you to ask for help um, with any part of this. We all have had a long time thinking of ourselves as a form, as a shape, as a someone only. And sometimes we have to remind ourselves a little bit to get back to thinking of ourselves, perceiving ourselves as what we really are first and foremost. And it's always good. Everyone that asks for help is helping everyone else as well. There is only the one spaciousness. There is only this never ending you that is everywhere. And in each human form, it is having this experience of being a separate being. It is not actually so, not actually the case. Okay. So if there are any questions, I'd like to invite you to ask uh, questions about this or anything in particular in awakening, you want to raise your hand. I'll take up to uh, four questions. So I've got a couple to be read on email, which I'll go through now. <clears throat> so the first question says, um, uh, why can't I identify with awareness? It seems that awareness can only know itself, but not identify with itself. So keeping the attention on awareness seems to require constant effort and remembering, which is probably an attempt to identify. I appreciate any clarity you can offer. So why can't I identify with awareness? We need to really look at what it means. Um, awareness, just another word for the spaciousness. The spaciousness is intelligent and the form, the body, mind has no intelligence of its own per se. It's borrowed from this um, awareness, from this spaciousness. So what does it mean to identify with awareness? If we look at identity, what does that mean? What are we trying to do? And first, our identity is in this separate being we are sure we know beyond doubt we know with utter conviction that we are this separate being so identity then means what we know with a certainty beyond question so how do we come to know we are this awareness beyond question beyond doubt i think that is what you're asking and it can't be as you said here just keeping attention on awareness because that is not possible 100% of the time. And it's not really the goal anyway. It's enough to bring attention to this awareness that it's here to check it out as we've done today, to see what it really means, what it's like, if it can be harmed, all of that where it, where it ends. Is it really just my awareness? And the next person's awareness, is there really a edge a dividing line to my being to my awareness or is it just the awareness and then as we begin to check that out i would suggest looking as we've done today for a you the one that's trying to identify can you find it or do you just find awareness as you just find awareness when you look identity shifts anyway becomes clearer and clearer that when you don't find a separate being, when you look and you only find awareness, every time you look, there's a body, there's thoughts, there's emotions, but no separate being to which they belong. 
There's just body, thoughts, emotions, and awareness. It becomes clearer and clearer every time you do this, that this awareness is what you are, that there never was a separate being. Identity shifts by itself, then all there ever has been has been this awareness that gets clearer and clearer. For myself, I must have looked a thousand times and never found, found this separate being. It still seems to be here, but I never found it. And I came to peace with that, that it seems to be, that it's an optical illusion based on sense perception happening in the body and thoughts, a uh, sense of experiencing. So as it becomes clearer, there never was a separate you, there only is this awareness, spaciousness, identity shifts by itself. It has to become clear that that really is what you are as you realize there never was a separate being. That just happens by itself when you come to a deep conviction. Every time you look and don't find a separate being, identity is shifting incrementally. For most of us, it happens very slowly. Each time you look, a little bit becomes a little bit more obvious that this is what you are, that it's not really empty space, that it's something so profound and yet overlooked, undervalued. Most of us need to look again and again and again. If there never was a separate being and all we find is awareness, that must be what we are. Every time you'll get the same answer. You'll never find this someone, this seems to be this. So it's not really identifying with awareness the same way we identify with the body mind that's happening in thought. Awareness, you look, you find the awareness, you check it out, you can't find anyone in it. And then you begin to identity shifts by itself then to a deep conviction. What starts off as, oh my goodness, there's no separate being, this awareness is all there is. Real shock, surprise, becomes more and more normal. Then you become more and more convinced. And then it just is so obvious in the end that you don't even need to question it anymore. And that's the conviction, the identity having shifted. Wonderful. So next question. This is really a two part question. I have this belief and feeling that there is a better version of me in the future, more awakened, more peaceful, has a better life and relationships. I need to work more to get there, do more practice, be more committed, um, extra, etc. In other words, I'm not working or being enough now. What are your advice and insights on this issue? So this spaciousness that we've checked out today, I would have a, have a look at it. Can it be better in the future than it is now? Is it changing? Is what you are changing? Yes, your body and mind is changing. And it's an appearance arising out of, like the wave arising out of the ocean. And the wave is constantly changing shape. Except for this wave doesn't actually ever diminish. But, and as the wave arises, and then it builds in intensity, it seems to constantly change shape. Would we say that the wave is not good enough when it's only just forming and that it's adequate once it's fully, you know, once you can surf on it? Or is it really not like that? So our body mind may be ever more able to express this truth that we are this spaciousness um, through deep recognition and identity shifting. We may express more qualities like compassion and love. Uh, we may be exhibiting more of the qualities that we want to. Does that mean we were not good enough to start off with? Or does that mean simply that the body and mind are ever more able to express this light of truth? So just another way to look at it. Body and mind are constantly going to be changing and deepening in their reflection of this truth. And 
only if you take an arbitrary point in time and start from here and compare it to this one three months, three years, three days later and say, here's where I am now. Here's where the body mind are later. They're going to be expressing more of the qualities you want at this point and less at this point. This is always ongoing in the nowness of this moment. And when this body mind goes, there'll be another one if you want to to continue that expression, that unfolding. Can we really say, can we really pick an arbitrary point? Is there really that arbitrary point in the future anyway, if it's just an ongoing, continuous manifestation of change? Something to consider there. And the last one of this, see we have two questions waiting. Um, I found my, I found one of my fears towards the waking is that I might lose my interest in the physical world, like leaving my job, not doing anything in my life, just resting as being. It sounds really silly. And then I started to judge myself for being materialistic and attached to the physical world. May this be coming from the belief that I need to sacrifice something to get what I want. Could you please enlighten me? Thank you again. So we all have this fear or at least I really did, and a lot of beings that I've worked with have. But when I rest as a spaciousness, when I see and I know with identity having really confirmed this is me, what would be my motivation for doing any of this? And we might experience a little bit of that first, a little bit of wanting to just sit, our body to just sit, and notice this and notice this and notice this. And there was a period for me where that's all I wanted to do. And I really began to resent having to do activities in the world. But that was a great gift when the world seemed to pull me back into that. It was a gift because it brought this desire forward to live as this spaciousness all the time. And when I did that, when I really wanted to, when I allowed that desire I began to really see that all of this physical world is not different to or separate from that spaciousness, that awareness. And in fact, as that gets deeper known, we, our engagement with the world increases. We become even more interested in the world. It's not just something then that won't go away or some accident that arose out of, you know, manifestation is an accident that arose out of the um, awareness. It's actually seen deeply as you keep looking that all of this too is me. All of this too is the spaciousness arising. All of this is not an actual thing. There isn't an actual manifestation, but an appearance, just like the wave isn't really different to the ocean. It's all water that it just looks different, then you can't help but falling in love with the world. If you love truth, you'll end up loving the world because those two words, truth and world, are unmanifest and manifest, begin to mean the exact same thing inside you. And you don't see them as two in the end. How could you not fall in love with the rest of yourself, all of this? And you actually find the opposite is true, the fear that you become much more able to help, more engaged in the world, more time, more energy, more clarity on how to help, more efficient at the roles that the body-mind takes in the world. It's very, very common, but I'd really suggest there are stages to awakening, kind of. First, I might recognise the spaciousness exists. I might notice it for the first time. Then I'll come to notice at some point that I am that. And then I'll come to recognize later down the line that everything is that. Everything is that. The whole world is your manifestation. So lovely. Okay, so Mike, whenever you're ready. Hello, can you hear me? I can, yeah. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what the first questioner asked about the identification as the identification slowly begins to switch over and it's more just I guess a report and as I thought about how I was going to explain this 
I'm just all tongue tied now. So I'm not quite sure <laughs> Best I'm not to think to about start. it too much, isn't it? Yeah, that's the thing. If I don't think them, the words won't come out. So <laughs> it's more like um, it feels like the subject object relationship is beginning to break down. That that's like, you know, when I, my question was the same. How do you know when the identification is beginning to switch over if you're not really looking to your feelings and your thoughts as evidence anymore? Yeah. And it's Good just more, yeah, it's just, I can't even describe it. It's more just like the knowing of your own existence and who you are start to become the same thing. And so it's just getting harder and harder to separate the knowing of the noumenon and me knowing it. Yeah. It's, it's just harder to know, see that there, no, to, to see that duality anymore or to sense that duality anymore, I guess. Um, this body still reacts to things here and there, but now the realization is that it's not relevant to me knowing what I really am anymore. Yeah. So it's, and it's, you're like, you're right. It's happening slowly in the background. It's not, it's not one large event or anything like that. It's just, uh, as I continue to look, like you said, over and over and over again, it's now clear that even turbulent thoughts and feelings are it as well. It was never any separate. It wasn't like this crazy separate ego looking at the noumenon. There is only the noumenon and it's just only still just recognizing itself and everything, including anxiety, whatever you were, those emotions you want to call them. Mm -hmm. That's what I just wanted to follow up and report on that, I guess. Yeah. Um, it's not obvious at first what the progress is really in terms of identity shifting. Is it because um, it's not going to happen in the way that we're looking for? The way that we identify the body mind is, is a very specific way. Keep thinking about it and reinforcing it. But identity shifting um, to knowing that you are the spaciousness, the noumenon, whatever we're, we're going to call it, um, it really manifests in a different way. It's kind of just, a, as you've described, actually, um, just a total okayness with manifestation, with the body-mind, <clears throat> with the world as it is right now. It doesn't mean there aren't things you would like to improve about it, uh, whether it's the world or your body or your life or a particular relationship or something. But... Um, more and more you're just your attitudes are that of the noumenon which doesn't really need anything to change at all to be free to be happy to be peaceful um there's just a more and more okayness with how things are a more love for how things are right now in the manifestation <clears throat> which then becomes transformative in itself as that realization that we don't really need to juggle around the manifestation to make it look a certain way for us to be happy it tends to start to occur on its own anyway because we're no longer pushing against what is all the time um, and then as you see deeper that manifestation is what you are too that, that it's just another way you can show up as something or everything or nothingness then there's just a, an okayness about what is really an acceptance, uh, uh, being with it. And it doesn't mean liking it or uh, even wanting it sometimes, but there's an acceptance of what is, there's not fighting against this moment. You probably feel that inside deepening. Yeah, it's, it's interesting is the realization that peace is the core and acceptance is the core of what I am especially in relationships, the manifestation is now beginning to show that, like show reasons for that. Like there's this sense of it inside and then on the outside, something happens and yeah. it just makes things more peaceful. I'm like, oh, because that's sort of what I was already emanating. <laughs> yeah, and as you said, um, subject, object, divide. So the subject me here and the object the thing I'm experiencing the artificial division that we imagine so firmly begins to disappear. We realize inside and outside are me. There isn't really an inside and outside. Only seems so when a body's here 
there seems to be me here and everything else. And as you, that gets clearer that it's not really that way. And you clearer and clearer that what I am doesn't need anything to change. And of course, out there has to agree with it because it is also us. There is only the one being everywhere. And um, our manifestation, our world starts to, to be something that we don't need to change either. It has to change. The appearance of it, excuse me, has to change to reflect it's just fine as it is right now. So we're fine. Everything's fine as it is. Spaciousness, the formlessness cannot argue with reality, can it? Cannot argue with manifestation, wouldn't want to even. So the reflection of it in the, in the manifestation changes uh, to something that we also don't need to change, which is what we've always wanted anyway. It just comes a different way to what we expect. Yeah, and what's being key, what's very key here right now is really seeing that there was never any person, uh, anything as a solid, separate entity called me. It's, it, you know, there is no separation between what the person is and the noumenon. It's becoming clearer and clearer. And as that becomes more, um, more resolved, less resistant to what's going on, yeah, the outside is, if you want to call it that, things that start to reflect that. Yeah. And with that being, there never really was a separate being. Eventually, you should be noticing now um, more and more acceptance of the seems to be ness that there will always seem to be someone like your body looks different to any other human body and your thoughts are uh, a collection of thoughts that will never be the same thoughts again in any human being and what, what you love to do what makes you unique as a human being is never going to happen again so we could appreciate the seems to be ness that there seems to be a separate being more and more we fall back in love with that uh, as we realize it's not actually a real thing we don't need to make it go away and we begin to fall in love with it more most of us yeah, start really our awakening to try to get rid of this separate being don't we somehow yeah it, it's like um there's a feeling of an embracing yeah of of the person of the ego of the, those thoughts and feelings it's yeah. gone beyond acceptance into this almost a love yeah, for it. yeah. And eventually a fascination a deep love that just allows that the same the, the individual um seems to be in us of it all uh, eventually becomes transformative in that way then that um whatever seems to need to change about my person will just begin to change in that loving embrace because i'm not trying to i'm not at war with it all the time I'm not you know dividing myself from it and saying you should go away or you should change yeah mm -hmm. That's my. That's what's happening. Yeah, that's why. Fantastic. Makes sense. What's going yeah. on? Just keep falling in love with everything, and that is easier and easier to do when you see it is you. There isn't anything that's not you. That comes right back to, you know, this. How far do I reach then? If I'm not a thing, do I stop anywhere? As so that gets clearer and clearer, that you're at least as big as the universe, then <laughs> it's kind of hard not to fall in love with the universe, including the individual body mind. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah. I realize it's not just the attention. It's more like, like you said before, it's like a pulling out of your focus from being zoomed in on a thought to just pulling out your focus and realizing you are actually the universe, not just that thought. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And also being able to enjoy your seems to be someone while it's here. You know, kind of both, both of those. Mm. Lovely. Thank you. Thanks for sharing, Mike. Okay, Steve, whenever you're ready. Hello. Hi, yeah. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Just almost afternoon. <laughs> yeah, getting there that way. Um, there's a bit of a story behind the question here, so I might take a okay. bit of time. Uh, usually, uh, I'm going back to yesterday really now but usually on the intensives come about four o'clock i'm flagging you know what i mean 
and sometimes I turn off, go to bed, whatever I do. So this time I thought I'll, I'll, uh, I'll plan it a bit better. So I thought I'll go to bed really late and get up really late and I'll be able to last longer, you know what I mean? So I went to bed about four, four, about four o'clock really late, you know what I mean? So wow. I'm, awake, I'm awake at eight. <laughs> <laughs> the best laid plans, eh? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So I got up for an hour and had a bit of coffee and blah, 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 and about I went, back, I went back again, set alarm. Uh, I wake an hour later. So I got, I got up and uh, I thought, I wonder if I can get it on my big screen. So I got <laughs> the laptop plugged into it. It won't be, it said no signal. So I, I got, I mended it down back and it needed a bit of super glue. So I did that. And when I put telly back on stand, I looked at it, there's a big streak of super glue down my screen. Ooh. <laughs> that cheered me up. It tes- like testing your, your level of awakening, <laughs> hey? Can anyway, you be it, with this anger? Is this yeah, a right? I'm, I'm pretty good with that. I thought, yeah. oh, God. Anyway, we finally got going, uh, and I just could not settle. I couldn't. Made it like a did. war zone. Couldn't sell. Accept it, Steve. Uh, love it, Steve. All this stuff. You know what I mean? Only thing I really enjoyed was the were the, um, the both meditations. The second one absolutely lovely. It really well. But the rest of the time, I, even in them, I kept saying, I have a vape and you shouldn't be doing this. It had nothing could settle. I felt so, and I really felt um, separate, paranoid. All the old stuff, really, just came back. I thought I've been doing it self inquiry quite, I'm really getting a handle on it. So I thought, so yeah. But uh, this, he just came back with a vengeance, you know, right? The old, like the old stuff, and I, I don't know if, but I really went through it in satsang when I wanted to go out for a vape. But it, 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 they all came back. And I, I really thought that was sort of dealt with. So it really sh- shocked me. I just felt it was really, uh, you haven't got any further really, it's hasn't gone yet, you know what I mean? But at the same time, I'm thinking, no, I'm going to be trying to show you something. So I kept getting a bit of peace, and a bit of sanity in between, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it was just a... Anyway, after that last, last, last meditation, I kept going to say, the first time I went, I thought I better ask or something. And I, there were too many people put their hands up, so I didn't bother. And at six o'clock, after that lovely meditation, I thought, I'm sorry, and I, I got signed off. So I'm glad you've come on again this morning, you know what I mean? Uh, is there a question? I don't know. You sound like one. <laughs> if, um, Where is it coming from? It's, if it's left you oh. lingering, you know, if, if it's left some lingering thing inside, then maybe it needs looking at. But what, let, let me ask you, if that, if that happened to me yesterday, if I was doing the intensive, and all the way through, my mind was just, nah, 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 you know, you're never going to get this and the restlessness. And what do you think the difference would be in our experience in that moment? If I went through what you did yesterday, what would be the difference? Would I be trying to get rid of it? I'm not saying you are, I'm just, just for clarity here. Well, I'm separating now. So I would imagine you, you're further on, so therefore you deal with it different and better than I do. Uh, more more yeah. accepting in you than there is in me, maybe. And um, would I be using this, if this is intense restlessness and just all this storm of thoughts and stuff, would I let that tell me that I'm not where I need to be, do you think? No. And can you do that right now in this moment? Does it have to mean anything? Well, that's what I've been thinking. That's what I've been trying to do. So lovely to hear you say that. But, you know, that is but, but that is, is the difference, right? You can't always um, determine what's going to happen. 
we all like to think that the best meditation is going to be where I sit down and feel so peaceful. Oh. But sometimes the best meditation is where this actual thing happens. And I remember one day clearly going through something very, very similar. And every now and again, something will still pop up. But the difference for me is that it doesn't mean anything to me, not in a cold way. I just mean I'm not going to use it to determine how far I've come and to compare myself to where I think I should be. Or I'm not going to let it suggest that I'm not where I thought I was. Because that spaciousness is not changing and it's not affected by it's really not saying I need the body mind to be calm. It doesn't really care in that way, does it? Whether the body mind is agitated or deeply in bliss. It's kind of just the same. So we can adopt that attitude. You can be like that until, until it's natural. Meaning um, the best thing the body mind can experience and the worst are, are honored and accepted but they're not used as reference material for how I'm doing my awakening. Because I am that, I'm always that. You are that, whether your mind is clear or not. So this thing comes back and happens to see what, what you're going to make of it, if anything. Does it mean something that it's happening? Only if you say so. If you say this means you're not where you're supposed to be, you'll keep traveling and you'll keep being disappointed if this happens. And then if you say this doesn't mean anything to me in that way, I am what I am, whether my mind is uh, clear, absolutely confused or experiencing a tsunami, doesn't change that which is the space in which it's happening remains unaffected, doesn't it? Like if a strong wind blew through this room, the space in the room is not affected by the wind. So you get to choose what this means to you. And even if you were choosing that it means something yesterday, you can still change your mind now. Mm -hmm. Fast forward another 10 years, you could have these moments every now and again for a while. Does it have to mean you're not there yet? Or can it be used to confirm, but I am that. It doesn't affect me, doesn't change me. When, and when it's not allowed to be reference material for how I'm doing in my awakening, it gradually stops happening because it doesn't need to show up anymore. Yeah, I think I get that. Yeah. yeah. I think I would try to do that at times. It don't really matter, so you don't really matter. I think I need sometimes, uh, I don't believe me. Yeah. So when I get it from you, it sort of makes more sense, you know, and it goes in none, a, none of us believe ourselves, right? And, and I spend most of my time, and it may seem strange, but having to tell people just how awake they already are, how much they've seen, and that they're only their self-doubt and they're comparing uh, to, you know, I might, I might really have noticed the spaciousness this morning. Feel, wow, yeah, I'm really getting it now. Yeah. And then the very next person who asks a question, I'll, gosh, I haven't experienced that. I must not be where I thought I was, you know, and immediately we're comparing. We should only be comparing to that spaciousness. No external body mind should be used for comparison and even no experience previously in your own body mind. Only is this affecting, compare it to the formlessness, is it affecting this? Is it trying to get somewhere, the formlessness? No. Is it trying to be more formless than it already is? No, but I am. <laughs> oh, yeah, here we go. What is this? Uh? And, and what would be, while we're on this track, because it's really useful for everyone, what would be the evidence you're looking for then? How would you know when you're 100% formless? Is there even that's such a another, thing? That's another one I'm looking at, this, this separation into the, the, the complete. What if there seems very, very to be, though, of you? While the body's there, there's going to be sense perception going on. There's going to be thoughts going on. There might be emotions happening. Do you have to wait till the body expires before you recognise the formlessness 
is as it is already 100% itself and it can never be more than that. That's what I've considered sometimes. Um, yeah. 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 So. And uh, we must recognise that what we are is what we are and we were that even before it was even recognised. And it'll be the same even when we recognise it con consciously, continuously, effortlessly. Now, for me, the formlessness that I am hasn't changed. You know, just because I've recognised it clearly. It's never going to change. There, there's no... Uh, there's no... Um, there's nothing I can look to that will tell me I finally got it because the evidence I'm looking for is in the body mind. I'm using the body mind to reference this formlessness. I'm trying to find some evidence in the changeful to let me know I am the changeless. I'm trying to stop the changeful moving to, to make me really feel like I know I am the changeless one, the unmoving one. Is that really going to work? Subtle trap, though, isn't it? I mean, I very don't... subtle. That's why I'm, I'm spending a bit of time of it here. Yeah, yeah. I'm not on it. And, and then mine says, "Well, yes, but if if you really had seen it, then your outer world would be peaceful, like an awakened being's. But it didn't happen to an awakened being by expecting this to change. It happened by standing firm, even if my body minds. If I wake up tomorrow morning and my body's in fear and feeling awful and there's anxiety and restlessness and everything my world suddenly turns upside down yes i'd like it to be better but it wouldn't mean anything for my self-definition what i know myself to be when anything can happen in your outside world and it's not affecting it's not used by you to, to compare where you're at how far you've come there's no journey in that formlessness is there anyway Empty space is never going to be more empty space than it is. And is anything changing in the empty space going to, going to be evidence of that or affect that anyway? It's always in here, you know. It's a quick, quick question now, which I've been taking te te a long time. Um, this is important stuff. This is helpful stuff for everyone. Okay. Um, We're all looking for some evidence from the body-mind when a body mind looks like this and feels like this, then I'll know it's there. But it's Somewhere. never going to work that way around. When I know I'm that and I've always been that, then the body mind will begin to exhibit the usual qualities associated with awakening, peace, love, joy, bliss, all of that. Quiet mind. We're, we're trying to do it the other way around. Can you see? When my yes. mind's quiet, and my emotions are always calm, then, and only then, will I admit. <laughs> so. We all do it, Steve. That's why, that's why I'm spending some time with it. We all do it. I spent about 10 years doing that, and it was really quite oh, painful. No, so, I don't want to know about that. I'm going to but you can, you, can, you, can, you can do this now. You can see. I can see as you're saying it, yeah, I can. Yeah. But it didn't, so I hadn't already seen. That's what I'm trying to say. It's how, it's how subtly it slips, you slip back into it. In the in, in best intentions, you know, I'm doing okay, but I'm, I, I'm already so giving, I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. Thing happened in the intensive yesterday. Then all it means is I just need to confirm this particular thing that we're talking about a few more times until it's automatic, until it's really clear, really, really clear. I've seen it before, and I'll see it again and again and again until anything can happen in my body, mind, and my world. And yes, I care for them, I love them, but. I'm not going to use what happens as evidence of my progress or failure, more importantly. Oh. And it's happened just to nudge you. You need to just look again. You could be a little bit more sure of this. You could just be a little bit more convinced. That's all this is, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Now, I think it leads me into the next question, really. You know, in meditation, we're talking about uh, the formlessness of the time. Of it, and you said... <clears throat> When I meditate, my focus always seems, when we get into that, it always seems to be somewhere here. Mm -hmm. It's like a buzzing goes on there. And I think, 
I can't come away from that. And I'm thinking, it, am I concentrating on the body now rather than the, or does it matter? Again, I'm just thinking it doesn't matter. But it's, it's as you recognize what's real, what's fundamental about you, it's going to cause a surge of energy in the body, a relaxation, and sometimes a lot more life force begins to flow. <clears throat> and, and the body is that formlessness, and it, but it also is manifestation is vibrating. So you'll feel vibration energy going on in the body. And it doesn't mean you're doing it wrong or anything. And focus may go to that because it's new, it's different. And, and it might even be, oh, I feel like I'm getting somewhere here. Something's happening. Um, but any phenomena, anything that happens, even this buzzing can be used to, there's the buzzing, okay, and where's the space it's appearing in? You can use it, any phenomena, even a noisy mind, to reference the space appearing in. So, does that help? It is, yeah, very much so, yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah. It's not, meditation is not to, meditation is not to completely keep your attention on the formlessness. It's to develop the habit of when it goes to form, some form, subtle form, to the next go-to thing is to bring it back. So we're not trying to get rid of thoughts or sensations or all of that. We can just use it to bring it back. Yeah. Does that help? It does very much so, yeah. Good, good. Thank you. Okay. Good questions. Okay, so we will uh, leave it there for today. Uh, as I said, I will add this to the core teachings playlist. And if you uh, feel that there's something important in the thing what we've been through today then just to confirm over and over again that's the only difference between somebody who's convinced of this and, and somebody who's not so sure is just to be uh, able to look again and again and again it may seem paradoxical that in the looking and <clears throat> not finding a separate being that that's the <laughs> right answer but it is and uh, we look again and again it becomes clearer and clearer and you'll just notice day by day, each time you look incrementally, it's just shifting your identity over from, I know I am this body mind only, to this, I am this, first and foremost, I am this spaciousness. And I'm also this human being appearing inside it. Thank you. Namaste. <laughs>